So now we are going to add a couple of more buttons here to our calculator to make it actually work to calculate something. So I have here one button to clear. So the next thing I want to have is a button where I can press a one and a two. So I'm again using an action and, and the, the text of my first button is one. Then I add another button. So I'm just co copying this. My second button is two. And because they are now below each other, I would like to have them next to each other. We're going to use a H stack. So you can format this by con pressing control I. So then it looks nice. So I have now these two buttons. They're a little bit too close to each other. So I'm adding here a padding. You will see all of these the option that I right now use to format this, you will see in the next sections where I talk about the layout and the stylings. So you will don't worry about it now, it will come later. We just in this section concentrate on the language parts. So I have now these two buttons and they're supposed to do something. And I can do this in this action call here in this curly braces. What do I want to do in this curly braces? I want to add a number to my final result. So in this case, I can say here in my action call, when I user presses on one, my final result should be equal to my final result plus one. The first thing that we see here, it has a difference between a let and a var. So when you declare something, when you declare property, you can tell that, oh, this is immutable. This is, this is a constant and it's not going to change during runtime when the user interacts. So my title is fine. I'm not going to change that, but my final results is clearly going to change. So this would be a var, but with SwiftUI, this is actually not enough. We need to add here an add state and we're going to talk later what this means. This is the magic behind SwiftUI that when you update this value, you change the final results. And you see, we have here a text saying final result. When you change final result, this view is actually redrawn and it then shows the new value. So we don't need to take care of redraw this text field here. Okay, now we have, we did this in our one button. We can do this for our two or two, two, two. So in this case, we use final result. And if you add something to the, to itself, so I can write it here equal to final results plus one, you can also use a plus equal one. You can also use a minus equal one or multiply by this. This is just shorter. So we now have, oh, actually this should be two. So now we can add a one and a two. And our clear button should also do something. In this case, the clear button is going to reset the final result to zero. The last thing is my initial value for final results. When, the fir when, the, when this view the first time appears to the user, What's the value that the user should see the first? Should I already show a high value? Probably not. Probably you always want to see zero. That's why in the beginning I declare that I start with zero. So if we now have a look at our calculator, I can press on one, this adds one, and I can add here a plus two and I can clear and add more stuff. So now we see the final result, but I also want to see the path to go to this final result. So I want to have another text field saying one plus two plus one, whatever you type. Because we change it during runtime, I also need a variable. This also needs to be states var, so a variable. This is my operation description. This is directly a string. And similar to my final results, I start with a zero or an empty, I don't show any description. So below my final results, I'm going to show my description. I can directly use this with my text view because I'm already having here a string. So when the user presses now on one, I not only need to change the, the final results int, I also want to change the, the string. So and here I would say my, my operation description you can also just add string values should be plus one. And when I, when a user presses on the two button, I want to also change my value here. 
um, my operation to 2 and when I press the clear button I want to change my, op my description to be empty again. So we can run. So now I can here add a 2 but you already see that actually the first plus I don't really want to have. So this is the moment I have to fulfill the condition that if it's the beginning of my calculation I don't want to have a plus here. So this kind of conditions we use um, if statements in Swift. So when I'm here on my button, I will check if my operation description. So how do I know that it's empty? For this, we have in this, when we use here string, this struct, this has some function properties already defined that we can use. And you can access them by saying dot is empty. So when you press dot, you see all the functions that you can use with this uh, with the strings. So you have here a count, which would give you the count of the characters in the string. Or in this case, it's probably easier to say is empty. And you see down here in the description, it gives us a Boolean value that says if this collection is empty. So this is perfect because now we can read here if my operations and this reads actually really nicely because it says operation if my if operation description is empty then do this something else handle this differently if it's nice to read it's also self-explanatory so we don't need to add here a bunch of descriptions for later so okay so we have now the if it's empty so in case it is empty i only want to add a one if it's not empty else, I want to add here plus one. So let's do the same for our two. If my operation description, now I'm using the count. So you see some of them. If count is equal equal zero, which means I don't have any characters in there. This would be the same case as if it is empty. The other comparison operators you have is smaller, smaller, equal. Then you have equal, equal, and you have larger, equal, and larger. So, but in this case, I actually want to have, if I'm exactly zero, if I have nothing in my string, then I'm doing the same as here. I'm adding just a two, else I'm adding plus two. So we run and see if our little description string here works. So I can press 2. And you see I'm adding here more strings. I clear and if I start again, I start again like this. So it, it is working fine. But there's already one problem we are facing right now because I have here quite a bit of repetitive coding. I always do the same operation. I always check here if my string description is empty for both 1 and 2. And I don't really like code repetition. And this gets even worse if we add all the other buttons. So one way of not doing this kind of code repetition too much is by creating our own functions. So it's, that's what we're going to do now. So you see how to uh, create your own functions in Swift. Outside, this is very important, here my body property. The body is also a property. So we don't add the functions in our body property, we add it outside, so down here. I'm going to create a function. And if you press enter, you see now the uh, defaults, the syntax it gives us with Swift. So first I have to give this function a name. And what we are doing here every time I press on one of these buttons is I'm I want to add a number. So this is add number and here we can give it parameters. And the reason why we have this is when I call this function, I need to give it sometimes different information. Like in this case, in the first for the one button, I want to say add one and in the second add two. So I would need to have here, I want to be able to give this function different values for this depending on which button I press. And I can do this with these parameters here. I'm going to show you the syntax of this. So what I name this, what I add here is a number. And I used here ins add number function here. I can now use this number. 
And you see now it reads a little bit strange because it's it's reading add number number. So we always want to make it really real easy. So I'm just taking out the first one, which because now it reads add number so and so. You see here it gives you have the option to get a return value, but we are not using this now. I'm going to show you an example later. So now in this function, I have this number and we are going to do this operation, these descriptions. So I'm just going to uh, copy and I'm actually also want to do this at this final result because this is also repetitive. So we're just going to copy all of these down here. So you see the difference between a very concrete example where I use always this two or this fixed value. And we want to now change all of this to with this fixed values with our number input variable here. So first, my final results, I'm going to add here the number. So this could be a one or a two. Then in this if else statement, I still want to check if I should add the difference here is just this plus. First case, instead of the two, I want to add now my number. We already saw this with the string is the backslash open parenthesis close parenthesis and I'm adding here my number doing the same for my second um, position where I use this number. In this function called I always use this input value a number and I can have I now have this nicely reusable function. So when I press on add one I can all delete all this logic here. And the only thing I need to do is here is call my add number and you see it already pops up at add number. And here I can give it a one because this is my one button. And then I do the same for my two. So in this case, I'm adding the number two. So now we don't have any more code repetition. So that's why this function is already useful.